Welcome back to the introduction to matinee. In this video, we're going to take a quick divergence away from the door that we were constructing. If you think back all the way to our introductory video, we showed you a door where we had this really cool red light that was at the top of the door that automatically changed to green while the door was opening. A lot of very interesting things going on in terms of animated lights and animated materials. Before we actually jump in and start trying to do that, we're going to create a simpler sequence in which we're going to animate the dimming of the lights that are around the top of the room. Okay, I remember that sequence. That was like the third sequence. That's right. The list. And that's what we're going to be starting with here. So uh, to begin, let's uh, take a look around our level. I want to show you something very important, and that is that the lights around the top of our room are, in fact, point light toggleables. That means that they are dynamic lights, not necessarily that they are casting dynamic light in our scene, but they are the type of light that can dynamically be adjusted in some way. In this case, we can animate its brightness value. So let's go ahead and jump into Kismet. And before we start creating a new sequence, I want to take a look at what we've created so far and kind of clean things up a little bit and uh, organize uh, some of our stuff into subsequences. Here we have this little door sequence we've already started to put together. It would be nice if it was in another subsequence, very much like what we have with our mover up here. To create that, all I'm going to do is hold down Control and Alt and drag a marquee selection box around all of these nodes. Right-click anywhere uh, here inside the Kismet editor and choose Create New Sequence with these six objects. And we will call this the door sequence. Press enter, and there we go. So now it is also inside a subsequence. If I need to access it again, I can just double click on that node, and that'll step us down into it. To get back out again, we can just click on the main sequence, like so. It's a very nice way to keep things cleaned and organized. That's right. So what I'll do is I'll move this just underneath Interp Actor 7. That got uh, snapped into place nicely. Uh, let's hold down Control and Alt again, and I'll draw a marquee selection box around both of these little subsequences. And we can either right-click and create a new comment, or let's see, I don't remember if this works like it does in the material editor. Can you hit C? Yes, you can. And get a new uh, comment, and let's try matinee sequences. And there we go. So now that's all nicely lined up in its own little box. So now I'm going to move away from here for just a moment, give us a clean slate to work from. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a new matinee sequence just for dimming these lights. Now you don't necessarily have to do this, but you might find it helpful in some cases, especially if you have a lot of matinee sequences, to come down and the first thing is drop an object comment with what it is you want to animate. So let's call this the light dimmer. And so now you can see that whenever we look at it, just a way to keep things organized. Now, before we start setting up all of the lights that we're going to control inside of this matinee sequence object, how about giving them a quick demonstration of what would happen if you tried to take a non-dynamic <laughs> light and control it within matinee? Well, that's a great idea. It would be a great way to illustrate the, uh, the importance of using dynamic actors as opposed to static actors. So let me double click on the matinee sequence object. And for now, I'll get the Kismet window out of our way. And now as I try to get really clever with screen space, <laughs> let's uh, grab our little... Uh, we have one static light here right at the top of this doorway. And I'm going to right-click and create a new group with it selected. And it'll let us create the group, no problem. We will call this, I don't know, test light... Uh, underscore static. So there we go. So test light static. See, and at this point, it doesn't care. If you go back in and take a look in Kismet, oh, yeah. you'll see that the light's there. Everybody's happy. It's connected mm -hmm. up. Things are going really well for us so far. Because it assumes that you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now you're about to tell it that you want to control a property value that is going to be of type float. So you're going to want to adjust a value in one of its properties. So he's going to add an add new float property track to and this group. That's right. As soon as I click on that, we get an error message. It says, warning, the track you are creating requires a dynamic actor, but the currently active group is using a static actor. Are you sure you want to create the track? Translation. Unreal saying, excuse me, Mr. Editor Man, um, I thought you knew what you were doing, but just in case you don't, uh, this really isn't going to work. But I will let you add the track if you would like, but once again, we cannot affect a static actor from inside of this track. It's like you just want to hear that read in like Michael Caine's voice, so it sounds like Alfred from Batman. <laughs> so uh, with that, let's say no, because we don't want to do something that we're suggested uh, not to do. Let's right-click and go ahead and delete out this group altogether. We'll say yes to that. Let's jump back into Kismet, and we still have this little floating uh, object variable. We'll hit delete and nuke that out. Now let's do this the right way. So uh, we'll kill out uh, Kismet for now. Now what I'm going to do 
is just select our central light. Now, don't let that make you think that all we're going to do is control one light. He's actually going to control the brightness of all of these lights all the way around the room. That's right. Now, this is something I could demonstrate, but for sake of ease, I'm just going to tell you how it works, and you can take my word for it. If you select a whole bunch of objects and create a group, only the first object you select actually gets added into the group. So don't waste your time going around selecting 15 different things, because it's not going to work. That's right. And we can always connect them up later. That's right. So no big deal. So we'll select our main central light, who will serve as a test bay. Let's right-click and say New Empty Group, and we'll call this uh, dimming lights. I think every single time I've created this group, it's had a new name. <laughs> so uh, this time we'll call it dimming lights. And we, uh, just as before, we want to add a float property track because we're going to cr we're controlling a property, namely brightness. Mm -hmm. And brightness takes in a number that has a decimal point, which, as you may know, is a float. So let's right-click on the group. We'll say add new float property track, not float particle param, <laughs> no, not no. float material param, but float property. Because it is a property of type float. That's right. Now, the cool thing about this, this is as soon as you click, you're going to get a window that pops up. It says choose property. What Unreal has done is it has reached through the group to this actor and has taken an inventory of the many properties we could potentially animate. And it gives us a drop down and shows us all of them so that we can pick and choose. Now, unfortunately, we can't read the entire name here. I I think we can stretch this window out, and now we can see the entire name. So just a little tidbit there if you want to see what you're selecting. But take a look at how the things that we've got in there mostly relate to a light. Oh, exactly. They do re relate completely to lights. Well, you've got draw scale, which really relates to all of our different sprites that we put in regards to an actor. But, True. I mean, we've got things like the shadow radius multiplier. Mm, sounds like lighting stuff. Yep. The radius, the fall-off exponent, and the brightness. Which is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and click on brightness, and we'll click OK. So now we have a brightness track. Notice it doesn't say uh, float property. It actually calls the property by its name, which is pretty handy. All right, with that, we are just about, I think we are ready to start animating. Sounds good. I can't think of what else to do, but now uh, what I'm going to do real quick is we need to determine how long our animation needs to be. Before I place any keyframes, I like to have some sort of idea of how much time I want our animation to take place. Because right now, you surely don't want five seconds. No. The funny thing about this is uh, when you're dimming lights, it's like a subtle effect. If you've ever been in a movie theater, I think you notice it more in theaters because you're expecting it. But if you're, like, in a room and you're, like, minding your own business and somebody slowly turns down the lights, they get usually get pretty uh, dim before you notice. Even in the movie theaters, I make jokes from time to time when they turn it down so subtly that I just have to say, I think I'm getting a tumor. Because <laughs> it's just like, is it getting darker in here? Oh, yes, or, it yeah, is. Or are my eyes going back? <laughs> exactly. So you don't want this to take place over five seconds because your player probably won't notice it. What I'm going to do is bring it down to the one-second mark. So for one second, we're going to go from full bright to full dark. And so with my time slider at the beginning of this sequence, and we'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see the sequence a little bit better than that, I'll press the Enter key, which is the same for adding a key, and we get our key in place. Now, uh, if I right-click on this key, <clears throat> excuse me, we get a drop-down, and we'll see the ability to set the value. And something kind of interesting here, if I click on this, notice what the value is. This is not some default value. 0.5 is actually the value that was assigned to the light to begin with. So it's pretty handy. Uh, what we can do in this particular case is we can set the light where we want it to be when we start out, and that's the key that's going to be held. So go ahead and click OK. That will work just fine. Let's drag our time slider to the end of our animation, and we'll press Enter one more time. Right-click on this new key and choose Set Value, and we'll simply take the value and set it down to zero. Notice how he gets instant feedback back in the viewport. That's right. You know, everything got really dark over here. Now, what I'm going to do really carefully, we'll see how well this works, if I zoom way out and get my timeline... Oh, actually, that looked pretty good. Yeah. There we go. So now I can scrub, and you can see the lights going on and off. Very handy. Now, I can also take my little section and expand this out. Now we can loop this. Very nice. So it'll give you a nice idea. You know, is this happening fast enough? Do you want to speed it up, slow it down? So it's a good way to play that back and just see what you're dealing with. But I think that's going to work. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, I think we're done here in matinee. We don't really need to do anything else. This is a very simple sequence, a single property that we're animating. Just keep in mind, you could, of course, jump up in the curve editor. You could have more keys in there if you wanted to have a longer sequence, maybe three seconds or so, and you wanted the lights to kind of fluctuate a little bit That's and right. fade well, out. We could uh, take our brightness curve. We Make yep. sure we click on the little uh, black square here, and we can send this up into the curve editor. We could fit this in and make any adjustments we want. Again, we can see the rate of change accelerating. Now, 
Now, just because the curve is going down doesn't mean that we're, uh, that we're not accelerating. The, the, it's the slope that determines how fast you're going. The downward slope, just in this case, means we're getting darker. That's right. Darker, darker, and black. Exactly. So uh, the rate of change accelerates and then decelerates if for some reason we wanted a constant change, which I guess there's no reason we couldn't do that. True. Uh, let's go ahead and select our It'd keys. be a little bit more noticeable to the eye. Yeah, so let's go ahead and just set this to a linear curve. So we end up with a linear curve. That sounds so funny because it should just be a line. But uh, anyways, we get a constant rate of change. It neither accelerates nor does it decelerate. So uh, let's test that out. We'll come over here and just get to where we can see. We'll loop this. Yeah, very nice. There you go. And you can really kind of see how that would uh, how that would change. And like I was saying just a second ago, feel free to have fun with this. Drop in some extra keys, expand the time just a bit, and adjust the curve in such a way that when you trigger the light, basically what's going to happen is maybe it flutters a little brighter, then starts to get dim, then just one last pop of light before it goes black. Oh, There's yeah. all sorts of things that you can do to really make it an interesting feel when you trigger this event. Absolutely. So with that, we can close out of matinee. We are done with it. Let's go back into to Kismet and have a look at what's going on. So here's our point light. Now we have our sequence all set up. We just need some way to go about triggering it. So what I'm going to do for the time being is we'll get out of Kismet for just a moment and we'll set up our triggering system. I'm going to right click here on the floor and under the add actor menu we always have access to a trigger. It's just always there which is pretty handy for us. Uh, let me bring back my widget so that I can move stuff around and I'm going to move this trigger right over here to this funny little holographic display thingy. You like that technical term, though. Thingy? Yeah, thingy. That, it worked. Holographic display thingy, and we'll get it positioned right about in the middle of it. I'll pull it out from the wall just a bit. Now, we'll pop into Kismet. With it still selected, of <laughs> With it still selected. That's going to be important here, because I'm going to right-click, come down to Create New Event using Trigger 3, and we will create a used trigger. Now, some important things that you'll want to do. Very first thing, if you want to be able to use this trigger over and over again... Otherwise, you're just going to toggle yourself into darkness. That's right. Make sure you set the max trigger count to zero so that you can use this as many times as you want. Now, from here, things are going to get a little interesting. Um, I would like to, one, not have the uh, user restricted to staring at this trigger. Uh, if they plan on using this, I want to be able to look generally in the direction of the lights to make sure they're going on and off. So we'll switch off B, aim to interact. Uh, let's also take the interact distance, which is the radius from the trigger at which the, uh, the effect will work, and we'll boost that slightly to about 200. It's just a, just a preference to make things a little easier. So basically you don't have to be right up on it, and as long as just a part of it is in your viewport for the player, you should be able to hit the E key and use it with no problem. That's right. It's just a way to make things a little easier for us. But now we are presented with a minor dilemma, and that is... How are we actually going to make this work? I mean, it's real easy to say that we could go in here and just connect this well, to play. Sure. But if we hit it, if we connect this to play, what happens? Well, let's test it out real quick. We walk in, and where are we? There, there it is. So let's go ahead and hit E, and the lights go out. Cool. Well, let's hit it again. But we can trigger it multiple times. Exactly, and nothing's working. Well, mm. that's because if we pop back over here to Kismet, there is nothing that is allowing us to play in reverse. That's right. Which would turn the lights back on. Because playing forward only takes us from a brightness of 0.5 down to zero by the end of that animation. Now, here's a, a bit where I'm going to throw you a useful tip that has more to do with Kismet than it does with Matinee. In this case, we're doing something that during the testing and uh, construction phase can be a little ambiguous. It might be a little tricky to tell if something is broken broken and not working when you don't get any feedback from your system at all. So to help alleviate that problem, I'm going to select my trigger, and we're going to add an object comment, which is going to say something like, uh, light switch used. And I'll put an exclamation point after that because we're actually shouting it at the user. And then up in our properties, we're going to uh, check B output object comment to screen. So it's actually going to log out to the screen when we use this. Now just to confirm this real quick, let's jump back into the game. So what he's getting at is, once again, this is a good technique to use for troubleshooting. Whoop, I didn't mean debugging. To... Yeah, I dodged there for a second. <laughs> Very nice. So boom, so there's light switch used. Now if I hit it again, we do get some feedback on the screen. So we know the trigger's doing its job, but we're not getting any response from here. So that gives us a place to look in our sequence to find the problem. Okay, so let's escape out of there. Let's pop back into Kismet. And the question here becomes, what do you do to make this work? Well, I'm going to give us a little bit more room to uh, think about the problem because, you know, if you've never done this kind of thing before, you might think to yourself, well, I could also plug this into reverse. Well, that sounds great. Let's give it a quick try. 
And oh, there we go. So here's our little guy. Let's hit it. And it did play. That's still nothing. That's because play is going to supersede reverse. So we're not. We don't just get to to play it back. What we need is a way to kind of intercept the signal that our trigger has been used. We need to run a quick check on it. And this check will say, are the lights on or are they off? If they're off, we need to turn them on. If they're on, we need to turn them off. So let's set up a simple Kismet system that will do that. <clears throat> now this Kismet system, I'll go ahead and clear these wires out of the way. They won't help us here. This Kismet system will be based on a simple Boolean check. So we'll go to a new condition, comparison, compare bool, and as you may already know, a Boolean value is simply true or false. So uh, let's take the input this is looking for, the Boolean. I'll right-click on it and create a new Boolean variable, which comes in automatically connected because I clicked on the little input there when I right-clicked. And to help me make more sense of this, we're going to add some comments. So this will be uh, light status. That's going to be the, uh, the name of this variable. And the compare bool, I'll even put a comment on are the lights on, question mark. Okay. So we actually know what's going on. So as soon as we use the trigger, we want to ask, are the lights on? And that's going to check the light status. Which is no, false. Which is currently no. Well, actually, the funny thing is, when we start the game, the lights are on. So let's set the default <laughs> value of this to true. Okay. So that way, we we're saying, are the lights on? Now it's, it's true, so it, yes. Exactly, now it's true. Okay, so your gut impulse might be, if the lights are on, we want to turn them off, which means we want to play. If the lights are off, we want to turn them on, which would be reverse. And that's all well and good, in theory. That, uh, that's a good place to start, but it's still not going to work. Why is that? Students. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. And then, boom, we mm. get nothing. And no cod. Well, let's take a look at that variable. That never changes. That's right. We have no way to change the, uh, the state of this variable. So that's the next place we need to go. Let's go ahead and unplug these wires. We'll move our little sequence over to get a little bit more room. I'm going to right-click and create a new action, and this will be a set variable, as long as my menu doesn't disappear. We'll do a set variable, bool. Now, let's go ahead and plug this first one into true. So if the lights are on, what do we want to change? We want to change the light status variable. What do we want to change it to? From true to false. That's right. So we're going to take the default value and leave it at unchecked, which is equal to false. Okay, so now let's take the output of that. So if the lights were on, we want to turn them off. So we'll connect this into play. And now we have turned the lights off, and then we have changed the state of the variable so just as a test, what I'm going to do is take false and plug this into reverse, and let's test this out. All right, so we come in, and we hit the switch, and the lights go out. Looking good. Let's hit the switch again. Come on, but now... The lights come back up. Now let's try it again. Yep, now we're stuck there. Nothing. Why? Because while we do have some system in place to set the light uh, status uh, variable from true to false, we don't have any way to set it from false back to true. That's correct. So let's go ahead and unplug this wire. I'm going to grab our little bool operation here, hit Control-C, Control-V, and make a copy of it. We'll unplug its little wire by Alt-Left-clicking on it, and we'll plug false into this. Now let's change this value. If it is false, we want to set the default value to true. And then after we get done doing that, we want to play in reverse. So now let's give this a quick test. We'll go ahead and close Kismet out, right-click, play from here. You're going to find everything works much better. So here we go. I'll see if I can position this so we can see the lights. And boom, the lights go out. Hit it again. Boom, the lights come up. Very nice. And we can sit here and do this all day. Outstanding. Of course, at the moment, we've got a series of lights all the way around the room that is leaving a ring of lit area. Which does look kind of nice, I have to imagine. <laughs> I mean, I would like that in my room. But uh, anyways, we're going to make those lights dim down, too, because they are all dynamic lights, and that's what we intended when we started this whole thing out. But let's jump back into Kismet. Now, the, the way to connect these lights in is simple. We just need them to connect into this little input, the dimming lights input. Now, any light that has the same properties being driven by the leader of the group can be powered by this guy. So anything that's got a brightness, we could plug in here, and its brightness would get animated from 0.5 down to 0. Uh, you wouldn't want to plug things like, um, like interp actors or anything else into here. This is really only intended to animate lights. 
Okay, so uh, let's take just a second. I'll close out of Kismet, and let's start grabbing some let's lights. Let's be very careful not to move any lights so that you don't have to go in and rebuild lights. That's right. So notice up here at the top in my toolbar, I'm going to check the prevent the mouse from being able to move rotate scale actors. So very handy button. And then just as a check and balance, I'll turn off the widget. So now all we can really do is select, and I'm going to hold down control and just select everybody. I could probably use a whole bunch of tricks to select all uh, point light toggleables in the scene, but I just wanted to fly around. We well, are almost done. Well, almost. With half. Yeah, we're going to fly into the other room and do this one, too. Also, I just kind of like confirming. Now, I don't always do this. If I had 187 lights to select, I might start looking at another way to approach this problem which would be like I could use the search for actors and I could search for point light toggleable and then take the entire list and uh, click go to on it. But we're already done. And everything in the other room is good, too? It should be. Everything but the central light, which is already connected. Okay. So now let's pop back into Kismet. I'll right-click out here. In, actually, I won't click out here in space, because if you do this, you have to connect everything by hand. Right-click right here on this input. That would be no fun. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's just do new object vars using point light toggleable, etc. Boom, and there we go. And everybody's already connected, and if you want, you can sit there and arrange all those. I'm not going to worry about it. So there we go. Let's give this a quick try out before we do anything else. Uh, I'll go back and go to Edit and choose Select None. Let's play from some spot on the floor. Hello. And look around for a second to figure out where we are. And let's give this a quick test. Boom. All the lights go dim. Ooh, it's nice and dark in there. And there we go. Now they come back up, and we can do this again. Now leave them off, and then go to the other room, and you'll find there's no way to turn them back on. Well, I never created but, a trigger. Nah, well, I was getting oh, to that. sorry. <laughs> I was about to say, but we do have a panel in there, so we need to go and get that hooked up, and at that point, the entire system will be complete. That's right. So what I'll do is start off here in this room where we have our trigger, and we'll hold down the Alt key. I guess I should bring my widget and the ability to move back online up here in the toolbar. I'll hold down Alt and just drag this through the wall, for starters. Then let's move over here into the other room. And I'll put this over here near our panel, as close to where the other one is as I can. Now it has the, uh, the same properties and everything, but what I need to do is pop into Kismet and create a new event for it. So we will right-click, create new event using trigger 3, and this will be another used event. Make sure that you set uh, the, your max trigger count to 0. And I'm going to get a little clever here with my object comments. So we'll take object comment and set this to light switch to used let's come back up to this guy and we'll set this guy to light switch uh, one used like so and I will make sure that we output that object comment to the screen we'll turn off B aim to interact because we don't necessarily want and the we player go ahead to stare and change at it. up our interact distance oh yeah I set that to 200 like mm -hmm. we did before so now everything is nice and equal, and all I'm going to do is take this and run it through the exact same network. So he's checking the exact same light status, which makes sense because all the lights are interconnected. So let's test this whole thing out real quick. We'll just pop in here on the ground, and we'll try out this panel, and it turns the lights off, and it turns the lights on, and it turns them back off. Let's go through the door, and let's try over here, turn the light back on, and back off. Outstanding. And back on. So that's everything, and it's all working. So we're almost finished. The last thing I want to do, though, is you'll notice now our window is very messy and has this huge, massive sequence in it. Let's go ahead and select this entire sequence by holding Control and Alt and making a nice big marquee selection. We'll right-click and create a new sequence with these 34 objects, and we'll call this the Light uh, Dimmer Sequence. Press enter, and there we go. Now, because its name is big, it's a little bit larger, I'm going to move this over here in line with all these other guys, and we'll take our comment box and just expand it out a little bit by uh, control dragging on that little black corner just to change the size of it. So with that, I think we're done. Yeah, that is. That's everything that we set out to accomplish complete. That's right, and that's going to wrap things up for this video.